Hello folks, with the release of the R5 and the R6, I thought it was time to take a look at the Canon EOS R. The Canon EOS R is a 30 megapixel full frame mirrorless camera launched by Canon in October 2018. As regular viewers will know, this is by far the newest camera I've used in a long time. I was lucky to get a couple of days with this camera just to see how it behaves compared to the kit that I usually use. Canon also provided me with an L series 24-105 f4 lens, less light but more affordable and definitely one to consider sticking on the front of your camera. So let's see what this kit can do. But first, let's quickly cover off some of the specs of the R. What does this camera get you? For around £2,000 you get a Digic 8 processor, a dual pixel AF with more points than a Federer tennis match, an ISO range that stretches from 100 to 40,000, also expandable to 102K, a shutter burst rate of 8 frames per second, a fully articulating touchscreen, an EVF with 3.7 million pixels, oh and it does video at 4K30 for those that like that kind of thing. I also like that it uses SD memory cards, so there's no need to worry about expensive new formats, although that does come at the cost of less durability in a single card slot. All of this comes in a body that weighs just 660 grams with the battery and fit in the hands nicely it does. Those already familiar with Canon's usual layout will feel right at home here with everything in easy reach. The touch sensitive bar quickly dropped on the latest cameras is a bit weird but it's not something that impacts on handling and can easily be ignored. What we don't get is in-body stabilisation, something that is offered by Canon's competitors. Is it a deal breaker? Not if you're using Canon's own RF glass, but if you like adapting different lenses, it's something to be aware of. Whilst Canon's most recent offering in the R5 gets you an insane 45 megapixels, the R's meagre 30 seems limp by comparison. Really though, it's plenty unless you're shooting tiny birds in big blue skies, in which case you need to get a longer lens or move closer. There's more than enough pixels here for cropping, especially if you're getting your compositions as spot on as you can in camera first time. What I have learned from using this camera is that JPEGs don't do the sensor justice and you really don't want to be shooting JPEG only with the EOS R. The 8-bit nature of the files means you are losing a lot of data compared to what the sensor is capable of capturing. It's quite astonishing how much light and colour can be pulled out of the shadows and to a certain degree the highlights too. There is a limit, as seen from some of these images. There's only so much that can be done if the highlights are completely blown, so it always pays to be exposed to the right where you can. Where the EOS R really excels is in its ISO performance. Anyone who's seen other videos on my channel will know that I mostly use old kit, where the challenge is getting noise-free shots. With the R, it's not something that needs worrying about, Unless you're shooting moles in the coal mine, the chances are you're going to have enough light. That's not to say you shouldn't still aim to keep the ISO as low as possible. You will still get dynamic range drop-off as it increases, you just won't be battling noise at ISO 800. When it came to autofocus, I found the camera locked onto objects very fast and I didn't have any trouble at all in this area, far better than any camera I've ever used before. So is the ESR a good camera? 
Well, yes, undoubtedly. Using state-of-the-art equipment reminds you that there have been big leaps in camera tech, so if you have the funds, there's really no need to hesitate at picking up the latest kit, whether that be Canon, Nikon, Sony or any other mark. I definitely had a lot of fun using this camera and I really don't have anything bad to say about it. It produces great photos, it's easy to use at any skill level, and it's a solidly built piece of kit. The real question is, will you see enough benefit in your own photography to justify the cost? And that's a much more difficult question to answer. For me, I get enjoyment from the challenge of getting the most out of old kit, and as such, I don't think I'd see the benefit of a £2,000 investment. Not in my photographs. Not when you can buy a Canon 1DS Mark II for £300, which is perhaps something to explore next time. Until then, I just want to thank you for watching to the end of the video and hopefully I'll see you in 2021.